Oops, sorry, I may have hit it twice. Sorry about that. Let me just... Okay. So then, how do you prioritize this? The numbers mean, where do I visually think is aesthetic priority? Just like when you're working in the front, visual aesthetic priority is central forelock, the center part, the hairline, and then diminishing, ret diminishing returns as you go back. Well, do you equ equally space the crown? No, because remember, I told you, it's already hard to get a great crown result, and if you just equally put the, the graphs there, you're gonna not leverage what you can as an artist, and what you can do as a technician to think about this and prioritizing. So for me, that upper arc where it covers up and over and down has a large distance of coverage. I call that, you know, cascade effect, meaning that that one graph travels here, and it travels there, and it covers the crown. Picture number six, it just covers a little going down. Picture number one, it covers up, over, and arc. So each graph has a much more power, has much more greater power up there. So I emphasize when I'm looking at the crown, where can I prioritize it? So one, two, three, upper arc, and one being the this up, and then three has a little less coverage. And then four being the, the part of the lower arc that reaches up, and then five having some more travel, and then six has having a limited travel going down. So these are important things. This is all in my book. As you know, I don't make much money on that, so I hope you don't think that's some kind of commercial thing. Um, but I, I'm very passionate about the book because this is all in there. I, it's to, to meant to educate. Uh, if, if you couldn't tell, I love that. So this here is the, the, the graph size is one, two, three, four follicular unit graphs. Um, there are very few fours out there you know, in nature, but just to say where you're gonna prioritize your larger numbers are gonna be in that same zone that you heard. You don't wanna use too large a graph in the central world because it could look a little unnatural. And you, if the, the finer the hair, the bigger the graphs you could in the central world, because that's an important area. You think about it, how much spread that central world is going out and covering. But you don't wanna make it so big that that center world looks abnormal. Um, what do we use? I tend to use needles. I can use, I start, start doing more little micro punch instruments now, but ultimately this, these are great instruments. You know, I don't really use a 20 because those are really accommodating one hair graphs for the most part, and you don't really need that when you're working in the crown. You can actually take those one hairs and pair them together and place them into a single site called follicular uh, pairing or family, familial pairing. And then 19s I would accommodate in general two hair graphs, and then 18 gauge would in general accommodate three hair graphs. And then you can also do what's called uh, Diaphragmatic unit or multiple unit graphs, which we'll talk a little bit about. Again, this is an advanced presentation. It just means you're pairing two follicular units together in the right circumstances. So, just to show you some patterns, I haven't really completed this. You see it a little bit more. I got to go into the uh, upper portion of this image, but you can sort of see the pattern. So, you want to start looking at recipient side patterns to really understand this. Thanks, Vance. And so, it's you can see that it, this is a counterclockwise uh, whirl for, on, on the right side. And you can see those transitions, this is the opposite. This is a clockwise from the left. And you can see those transitions going up to, to meet the vertex transition zone, and then the lower arc going down. The angles, we heard about angles for the last couple days. The angles are very low when you're dealing with the uh, front. We heard that's so important so it looks natural. The opposite is in the crown. Why is that? Well, there's a few reasons, three reasons. One is the fact that you create a round profile. If you've got really low angle graphs in the back, they're not gonna create that rounding effect from the side view. The second reason is that it adds visual density. Think about this, when that graph goes up and out, I'm sorry, up and over, it doubles, doubles back on itself, it creates more visual density than one just sort of lying flat. On the, on the crown area. So it actually creates all this visual density. And the other reason is you can get them tighter. When you have them really low angles, you're not gonna really get that tight placement. And again, just like everything in nature, there are no abrupt changes. So you can see that it goes from low progressively to high and then high progressively to low. So everything on the hair is natural small changes. And here's just a, a foam model to have you see it from a different perspective. So this is a case study. This is a gentleman that has not a complete hair loss, and you see that if I just created my own world wherever I wanted to, I have to fight against a lot of his remaining hairs. So I'm gonna use those hairs to my advantage, and I'm following where his pre-existing uh, crown hair uh, world was. So this is uh, a little video just showing you making some sights from the center of the world. Uh, this is using a 19-gauge a uh, needle bent. You sort of saw that when I was working yesterday. And you can sort of see, the more that you see hands move, the more that you can sort of memorize it. You know, it's very, very helpful and instructive to watch videos and watch people move. And that's why this, uh, this curriculum, I think, is so important to have that hands-on component. And this is 
showing you going farther out with uh, three hair uh, sites, in other words, 18 gauge, and I'm just going beyond. I'm going to show you in a, a schematic in a second uh, where we're covering and also a, a still photograph so you get a better aerial shot of this. So again, just sort of look at the, the hand movements. So this here is basically the two hairs in the center, and then most of what you're seeing is the three hairs arcing out in the green arcs. Why do I make three hairs asymmetrically going over to the left? Because here's a creative part, and that's what I want to encourage you as surgeons, is, is not to think of this as tedious work, but creative work. So you're actually creating these angles that arc up you, your three hairs are being leveraged to the left of the whorl because you can see that cascade effect going up toward the, to the vertex transition zone and arcing down and cover the lower arc. Compare that if I did a lot on the right where the, it's very limited distance on the crown. It's only going to cover a small area. So those three hair graphs are not going to be leveraged well. And I hope that makes sense. And again, if it doesn't, I'm sorry, this is, a, this is an advanced topic. And these are six, this is a 16 gauge to put diflucal unit graphs in an area that I believe is aesthetically powerful, which is the vertex transition zone in the very upper recess of the arc. You can see this with a schematic right here. So what you're seeing in orange is the two hair graphs. What you're seeing in the pink are three hair graphs. And what you're seeing in the blue are diflucal unit graphs. Now, as a point of not confusion, a lot of people don't do diflucal unit graphs. It's fine. I do. And I'm just, this is why I want to show you what I do and why. Finally, we're going to finish up with the 19 uh, gauge needle to go with the final two areas that are not as important, areas that are less aesthetically important, the lower arc, and maybe not as visually tight and dense as the areas that I just showed you, and we'll finish the work here with that movement. So it's the same movement, and this you see is just radi radially going outwards, and you can see I'm just finishing off the work with those remaining oranges signifying two hair graphs, or sites for two hair graphs. Um, this is what I always do for my staff so they understand. I always draw a little color-coded image so that my placers know where things go. And I think it helps them out a lot. So at least what they told me, and I enjoy doing it. It's part of my desire to be a pseudo-artist. And these are just when the, uh, the graphs are already placed. You can sort of see the final product. And it's really important patient positioning, especially when you're working in the lab today. I'll, I'll re-emphasize that. Remember that when you're working on the, the frontal hairline, when the patient is supine, it's the easiest because you keep the angles really low this way. But when I work in the crown, I have them almost sit, uh, sitting up, and I, I'm standing typically, not always, and allows me to work on the upper arc this way and keep my angles high, the exact opposite of the front. And then when I'm working on the lower portion, if, if I'm having the lo lower portion going in a clockwise, I turn them over to the left so my hand doesn't have to torque as I do that in the opposite of the case when I'm doing counterclockwise uh, creation for the lower crown. So I typically, in, if I do multiple stage sessions and the person's ball from front to back, the biggest mistake is trying to cover everything. You absolutely, in majority of cases, I'd say 95% of the time, don't want to cover the front to the crown in one shot. Don't have enough graphs to do it. So focus, number one, on the front because of aesthetic priority. Then I typically go back and do the crown, a uh, second stage. And as I said, the crown is very hard oftentimes to get the result in one. So I'll come back with a third session and fill in whatever I didn't quite fill, maybe areas of poor growth, other areas that I, I need more visual density. And I usually tell them three, although not always do they need the three. This is just showing a clockwise whirl. Okay, this is the gentleman that was in the schematic earlier. And this is the showing the rounding effect that occurs. Okay, it's not complete visual density because it's hard to do that in the crown with one session. This is a gentleman that had literally like seven to eight procedures of transplants and multiple scalp reductions, and this is one session to at least correct that, that slot deformity. You can almost see that the, the hair angles are off the way this was, you know, he didn't have the, what's called a triple flap repair to get it to look better, but this is uh, a correction with one session. And you can see when people are on finasteride, sometimes they retain some of their crown differently, and this is just an unusual shape from, from medical management, I believe. And then this diffuse pattern that happens in women, this is just an isolated crown. I rarely do that in a woman. And these are just finer graphs to show you that it really still works enough to get coverage, even though it's not 100%. And then this is a, a great example when you're just having all the, the angles going the same direction, it really gets you great visual density with one session because this is almost the anti crown. It's just the upper arc going up toward the vertex transition zone. So uh, thank you for your attention.